Hey guys, welcome back to the chess yard. This is Dehre Bagga and today I'll be showing you one of the interesting chess games and more importantly a lesson that why you should never give up in chess or in life because life will give you opportunities to bounce back somehow. Now this was uh, a game where I was playing as white. I start off with d4, open responds with e6. I play bishop to f4, opponent goes with d5. I play e3 here, We're just trying to solidify the center. Open plays knight f6, I go with knight f3. Trying for a London system kind of a setup, open plays bishop to d6. Generally, in the London rule is to get your bishop backwards so that if the opponent does take, you can take back with the pawn and open up the file for the attack, get your bishop out, play pawn forward, get your queen out, and then attack towards h7, where the opponent is most likely to castle. You can also get your knight onto d2 eventually, and you'll have a nice setup even if the attack doesn't work from the h file. Uh, opponent plays b6. I go with bishop to b5, giving a check. Opponent, of course, can prevent with pawn forward c6. I come back with bishop to d3. What I did by, with this move is uh, I played bishop here, and now my opponent cannot develop the knight on c6. So I took away the natural square for development for the opponent. Opponent now tries to exchange the light square bishop by placing it on a6. I thought, let the opponent take, I'll just play uh, c3 so that my pawn structure becomes solid meanwhile. My development is in progress. Opponent takes on the dark square bishop first, which I take back with the pawn. And now queen comes on to c7. Here I played knight to e5. Open does trade off here, finally, with the light square bishop. I take back with the queen. Idea is to pressurize on the h7 further. Open plays a knight to d7. And here I play f4. Now, the idea behind f4 is if your open does take ever, you can simply take with the f pawn. And your pawn structure will be doubled in the center as well. But you will still enjoy that position because you have taken control of dark squares on the open side. Open does take here. I take back. Opponent moves knight to e4, and now I play pawn forward, g4, trying to save my pawn on g3. Opponent plays pawn forward c5, trying to break open from the center. I develop the knight onto d2. Opponent pushes pawn forward uh, so that my queen can be kicked backwards, and that's what happens. And now knight to g5 by opponent. Here I went with a check on a4. Opponent defends with the queen. I trade off. Spoiling the opponent's castling, I thought it was advantageous, and then I went with knight f3. The idea again was, if the opponent does take, I can take back, and my uh, double pawns on g file will be sorted this way. Open doesn't take, goes for knight e4. I push pawn forward g5, because again, it is defended, so not tr uh, trouble. Open plays a5. I go with a4, uh, blocking that pawn storm, uh, and then open responds with g6. Here I go with g4, uh, which was kind of like okay move. Open plays rook to b8, and then I got got my rook on to g1, preventing knight from coming on to g3. I was basically trying to make sure that this 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 file is covered up because opens knight and doesn't have much room backwards to go, cannot take as well. So maybe I can just push with the king eventually in exchange. Uh, king goes to uh, c6 there, and I play my knight onto d2, which was bad because I allowed a free pawn there to be taken. Uh, and then I went with king to e2. So basically, I rushed into some exchanges, which shouldn't have been the case. And due as I rushed into exchanges for trying to break open things in the middle game, trying to force an issue is, is not, not always a good option because when you are looking at breaking stuff from your side rather than defending or properly attacking a particular weakness in the open structure, you are going to uh, not benefit from that. That's why my position went uh, downhill here. Uh, of course, I learned my lessons the hard way. Now I know what not to do. And then open played b5. Uh, I took on here, open takes back with the king. Uh, and now I went with rook b1, trying to make sure that next I can play pawn forward, break open from here, and then I'm attacking the king as well. Open plays h5. Uh, I let the pawn go. I just played b3, asking open to take. Open takes on 
G4, I take back here on to uh, C4. The idea is it's defended with the knight as well. Then I can take on the pawn too. And that's what happens. Oh, actually, I took on the rook first. Rook takes on B8, trying to deflect the rook from there. Otherwise, a rook can come down and can be nasty for me as well. Uh, so and now I take on the pawn here. Opponent plays a rook to B2. And now I take the pawn, giving a check, asking opponent to take, which op does happen. And then I just give another check. And then maneuvering my uh, king, making sure that my knight can be moved in the next move. Open plays a knight to h3. I go with pawn forward. Uh, open gives a check. I try to attack the rook here. And now open takes on the knight. It's a good move uh, by the open because after I take, uh, here comes a fork. But could have been uh, down fired as well if I would have just seen this coming properly. Should I just give on a check which forces my opponent to move? And now I take the rook. And now there's nothing hanging the rook is not hanging anymore on c5 so should have seen this coming i again rushed into the the exchange here which is which should never be the case you should always take your time before exchanging stuff as well i just saw the rook there lying and i thought okay let me just uh, grab this it's, it's free for taking and i went for it and that's why here i lose a piece Yes, I can take back, but what happens after that is opponent has majority of pawns and opponent's king is also closer. Uh, I take on the pawn here, opponent takes back, and suddenly I see, oh, it's two against three, and opponent's king ha is much stronger here. I try to just play pawn forward, which opponent, of course, does take, and then I will go with king e4. Here comes f5. I had to move the king onto f4. Now, king to f6 pushing me backwards. If I'm pushed backwards, of course, open king will uh, come down and then try to checkmate me eventually with the pawns uh, all over the place. So I played e4. Uh, open gives me a check. I had to go back. Open does push the king now onto e5, allowing me to take. I take here. Now I thought, okay, finally, I have at least make sure that these double pawns are there, which can be stopped, I think because at least they are not on the opposite directions and not in the different files, not in the connected files. At least uh, they are on dub double pawns to begin with. But in the end game, these double pawns are very good. All you have to do is just push for one pawn first and then make sure that the right time comes, you move the second pawn then only, which would be a waiting move. And then you can easily promote from here. My opponent didn't uh, probably knew this and after a couple of moves after open pushes uh, and i tried to hang in on the same row uh, same column same file as you see i just kept on hanging there trying to be on the g file open pushes for the king now onto f3 right technique till here here i played king h1 uh, open pushes the pawn allows allows me to play king to g1 and the next move as i said is always to play the waiting move at the end. Do not rush in with the double pawn here. Uh, and all opponent had to do was play pawn to g4. And then next is my turn. Uh, turn and, I, and the only legal square is h2. Because uh, otherwise I cannot go here. All these squares are covered up. The only place king can go is h2. Uh, otherwise it's a stalemate. And my opponent plays king to g3 unknowingly or maybe knowingly didn't calculate it properly didn't know the end game strategy maybe time pressure uh, yes you can see this sometimes coming uh, 28 seconds on the clock against 45 can be one of the reasons but whatever it is from this situation the open shouldn't have lost it uh, it's a loss because it's a stalemate uh, because of the wrong move when you had two extra pawns which both of them could have been promoted eventually all opponent had to do was after I played king to g1, just play g4. And after that, there's only one legal move, as I said. And here comes queen on the board. As with a check, opponent can take here. No problem. Just slide over. Take the opposition, making sure that opponent, my king has to move away. Now, whichever way I go, uh, things don't look good. Because after king comes on to f2, it would be an easy way to promote because the pawn will always be uh, defended with the king. So this is one way. 
even if I would have gone to the other way, still opponent can just simply play king on to uh, h2 as well, eventually pushing the pawn and getting queen on the board. And then it's a simple checkmate with the queen and the king. So it's the concept of opposition which my opponent had to look forward to having the double pawns in the end game is always advantageous. You can always sack a pawn. But for that, you have to be aware when to do that rightly. And in this position, my opponent went for a draw just because he played king to g3. Should have just played a pawn forward. The double pawn was vital here, which the opponent missed out. And uh, because I didn't resign in the game, I ended up as it as a draw, not as a loss. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you understood the concept of opposition here. Uh, how to use double pawns to promote uh, into queen uh, and win that win that end game easily. I hope you really enjoyed it. Do let me know your feedback. Keep watching and sharing. Do subscribe to the channel if you haven't already by now. And I shall see you tomorrow with some interesting and instructive content like always. Thanks for your time. Take care. Bye-bye.